Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Um, we're going to do something a little different today, so I really need you guys to be focused. There's no time for little cat naps. There's no time for to eat breakfast. There's no time to look away uh, because what's going to happen today is um, we're going to go back and forth from the teams back to WebEx, teams, WebEx, teams, WebEx. And so it's very important that you follow directions um and um pay attention to what i'm saying and what we're doing okay all right so first of all you have a test tomorrow um your exam um p6 is at eight o'clock tomorrow morning uh, make sure you take it um if you miss it i'm going to ask for a parent conference um to find out what's going on so um you cannot take it later so Make sure that you're you're on it and um, taking the exam um, tomorrow morning. Okay, would anyone like me to ask any questions, final questions? I'm only gonna entertain this for about five minutes. Anybody wanna ask me any questions about P6? How many questions are gonna be Ms. Birch? It's about 15, it's about 15 to 20. Yeah, it's in between there. So you can get, you can guess um, in P6, there's, let me just get to it real quick. In P6, there are one, two, three, four, there's five sections. So that means two problems from each section, 10 problems. So there's anywhere between two and three problems in each section only. So to study for this, what you want to do is go to the e-text and click on the globes and do the first four to six problems in each section. So if you know how to do the first four to six problems, I'm evens too, like one through four or one through six. If you know how to do the first four to six problems in each section, you should get an A on the test. There's no reason why you shouldn't get an A on the test. All right, does anybody wanna ask me any questions about the exam P6? All right. Well, in P7, I started going over the quadratic solving methods. And if you go into Google Classroom, you're gonna see a table in materials of solving quadratic equations. So you can solve them by graphing, factoring, you could solve them by square roots, completing the square in the quadratic formula. And so I'm gonna to start to go over those solving methods today. And I think yesterday I went over solving using factoring, right? So would anyone like any problems for by factoring. Yeah, um, that's the the second section, right? It's on page one hundred six, number fifty five. Solving by factoring. Oh yeah, can you do number fifty nine after this problem? I'll do 59 right now. I'm only going to do one problem. F5x squared equals 20x. So you have to remember all the different steps. So for factoring, you want to set the equation equal to zero and make sure it's in standard form, descending powers of x. 
Then you want to factor using one of the seven factory methods. And then you're going to want to um, use the zero product. I'm just going to base it. So you know, but can do, you can divide both sides by five. You said If you're wondering, why didn't we do this before? Because we were dealing, when we were fracturing, with expressions. So you can't simplify expressions unless you're simplifying up and down. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. So when we divide by five, we get X squared equals four X, which is nicer than the original problem. So I'm gonna set it equal to zero. So I get X squared minus four <coughs> equals zero. Minus 4x, sorry. So what factory method can you use? Isn't this a GCF? So can't you take out an x and you get x minus 4? So now we're going to do the zero product property, zero product property. What makes this zero? Zero. What makes that zero? Four. So this quadratic is crossing the x-axis at zero, zero, and right four, zero. So you, I can't remember it for you. When you solve by factoring, you have to set it equal to zero, Make sure it's in descending order. Use one of the seven factory methods and use the zero product property to solve it. All right, do you want me to work another one? Do you want me to work 58? Uh, now yeah, remember, can... huh? Yeah, can you work one more? Remember that 55 and 56 go together. 50... 59 and 60 go together. So x squared x equals negative 15. It's still not set equal to zero. So it's x squared minus 8x plus 15. It's in standard form, and now we're going to factor. Well, which factory method do we want to use? GCF? Method, is it grouping? No. It's factory method 5. So what multiplies to give 15 and adds to give a negative 8? Negative 3 and negative 5. So your solutions, using the zero product property, what makes that 0, 3? What makes that 0, 5? So this is how you solve by factoring.
Anybody want to ask me any questions about it? Okay, now you are not going to follow those steps when you are solving by square roots. So now I'm on 61 through 66. Now, this is a really good method, but it doesn't always work. So this doesn't work if you have an X. Can't have an X. So in other words, if we tried to use square root method on this problem, can't do it. See this X right here? Can't use square roots when you have an X. So in number 62, it looks like 5x squared equals 45. Well, we can do it because it doesn't have an x. So what we're going to do is simplify by dividing both sides by 5. So x squared is equal to 9. Now, if you notice, with square roots, we don't set it equal to 0. We isolate the square. Then we take the square root of both sides and then just a little note, don't forget to put plus or minus when you take the square root of both sides. By the way, if you have been absent and you've looked at some of the videos on my YouTube channel, they've been messed up. Uh, but it has been resolved. So the videos are now fixed as far as I know, and you will see a big picture of me. So I apologize for a couple of the videos that look messed up, um, but hopefully the recordings on YouTube are back to normal and where you can actually see me. Uh, the thing is, is don't be absent. We won't have to worry about it. Uh, but if you have been absent, there's a couple of videos in the past that are messed up. All right, so we isolated the square. So now is we're gonna take the square root of both sides and don't forget to put plus or minus for your two solutions. So square root of x times x is x comes out. Square root of 3 times 3, a 3 comes out. So there's your two solutions. Negative 3. So different process. And you have to remember the process. I can't remember it for you. So you have to remember the process. So I'll do number 64. Number 64 looks like 63. So you have three X squared minus one equals 47. So follow the steps. We're, we're not gonna set it equal to zero like that, but we're gonna isolate the square. So you're gonna add one to both sides and you get three X squared equals 48. Well, those numbers are divisible by three, so I'm gonna simplify. Three times what is four, one, with one remainder. Three times what is 18, six. If you didn't follow that, let me know, I can show you again. You're gonna take the square root of both sides. Do not forget plus or minus for your two solutions. <clears throat> So X is equal to plus or minus four times four under the radical. So your two solutions are negative four and four. 
So we like square root method. It is an easy method, but it doesn't work when you have an X. All right, anybody want to ask me about square root method? The next method's harder, and I'm going to be sending you off to your teams to practice. So. So given the choice, we want to we want to solve by factoring or square roots just because they're the easiest. The problem is they don't work for every problem. So we can't use them all the time. Now, this next solving method is called solving by completing the square. And these are problems number 67 through 74 on page 106. So I'm going to do problem number uh, 68, x squared, a little bit, I'm going to put a minus 8, put a plus 8, I'm going to put a plus 8. All right, so here's the deal. Remember when we were looking at perfect square trinomials and I said, is the first one a square? Is the third one a square? And is it positive? And we were able to write it as the square of a sum. Remember that? We did factoring. Well, that's what we're doing. But this guy is messing up the problem. It's like, what are you doing there? You're not a perfect square. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, go away, go to the right side. You're not helping us. So what we have is we have a wet board. Hold on. We have X squared plus six X equals negative eight. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a perfect square trinomial. So, and this is how we do it. You see the middle term? That was the middle term, right? You're going to take half of six, three, and you're going to square it. You're going to always do that. You're taking half of the middle term and squaring it, half of the middle term and squaring it, half of the middle term and squaring it. So I don't know if you can see these colors, but this is pink and we're going to add the pink one to both sides of the equation. Now, do you see what I did? I created a perfect square trinomial. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, look what I did. I created a perfect square trinomial. So I'm putting the pink one for the trinomial and I'm putting the blue one for the square of the sum. In other words, this equals this. So X plus three times X plus three is X squared plus six X plus nine. Crazy, huh? So who came up with this? Pretty cool. And this equals one. So now we're gonna use square root method. So we're gonna take the square root of both sides. So there's two of those, so one comes out. Don't forget your plus or minus, one. So now when we subtract three and solve it, we get negative three plus or minus one. So we have two solutions. So we have 
x is equal to negative 3 minus 1, and x is equal to negative 3 plus 1. So we have negative 3 minus 1 and negative 3 plus 1. So we get x is equal to negative 4, and x is equal to negative 2. So your two solutions are negative four and negative two. And now you see, this is, this is time consuming. Okay, now I'm gonna do another one. So if you have any, so you're gonna have to do this in your teams and you're gonna have a time limit. So if you have any questions, make sure to ask me. You want, me, you want to ask me about this? You want me to do another one? Can you do another one? Yep. Okay, let's see here. I just did, um, well, I kind of changed 68. Let's do 70. So they already moved that guy. He's not a perfect square, so it's good that he's sitting over there already. So he's already over there. Good. So now we're going to create a perfect square trinomial. So remember what I did. I took half of four, which is two, and I squared it. So I'm gonna add four to both sides, and there's my perfect square trinomial. So I forced it. So, oh, that's the wrong color, I'm sorry. So what I created was the square of a sum. And the square of the sum would be the square of x plus 2. That's equivalent to the trinomial. So on the right side, we get 16. Now we use square root method. So we take the square root of both sides. Don't forget plus or minus. So we have two of these. So we get x plus two comes out and that's a perfect square. We subtract two, we get x is equal to negative two plus or minus four. So we have x is equal to negative two minus four and x is equal to negative 2 plus 4. So x is equal to negative 6, x is equal to 2, and those are your two solutions. All right, now, before you go to your teams and do your own problem, does anybody want to ask me about this? Um, if the right side isn't a perfect square, then what happens? Yeah. So let's say the right, let's say it looks like this. X plus two equals plus minus the square root of five. What you do is subtract two and you just leave it alone. It would just be negative two plus or minus radical five. So your would be negative minus radical five and negative two plus radical five. And if there's any perfect squares under the radical, you have to get them out. So you're right, it's not always gonna turn out like this. Um, later on, these could be imaginary, it could be radicals. Um, yeah, so.
Okay, any other questions about this? This, this is what's confusing right here. So anybody have any questions about what I'm doing right here? Always take one half of the middle term. You always square it. The last number is always added to both sides, always added to both sides. And when you write the binomial squares, pick up this number. Okay, now listen carefully. You're gonna be timed on this. And if you do not work together, you're not gonna be able to do it. So I've been trying to get you guys to collaborate and now you're not gonna be able to do it if you don't collaborate. All right, so I'm gonna put a problem on the board. You are to go to the math teams and you're only gonna have, I'm gonna tell you when to report back to WebEx. So you're gonna keep your WebEx tab open and you will report back when I tell you to. And I'll be checking in on the teams to see if you're doing what I ask. Now, I'll just let you know what happened. Last period, at the end of the period, they were doing fabulous. But at the beginning, I had to yell at them. And I threatened to not ever do these group work, these team things anymore, if they don't do exactly what I want. So I'm gonna say the same to you before we even get started. If you do not do what I'm asking you to do by talking out loud and collaborating through the problem, I'm only going to lecture. We're not going to have any group work whatsoever. All right. So when you get into your teams, you need somebody to read off the problem. And then you have asking questions. What do we do? What do we write? What should we do next? What do we do now? And you're doing all the steps to all right, so let's write down your problem. You're gonna solve it by completing the square. All right. You have to report back at 11.25. So right you're going to report back to WebEx at 11.25. You have seven minutes to do this problem. All right, here's the problem. You could do it on scratch paper. You could do it in your notes. All right, I'll see you back at what, 11.25? I'll see you back at 11.25 and I'll see you in your teams. Good luck. Okay, hopefully everybody's back. And that wasn't too bad. That was better than first period. Um, but um, what I want you to do is I, I don't want one person saying how to do the problem. The person who knows how to do it, you ask, what do we do? And write it down. What do we do next? That way, nobody's lost. And not only that, but as you go through it, you catch each other's errors. So everybody's actually talking. You're either asking a question or are you saying what to write? So we'll try it again in a minute, but that wasn't too bad. All right, let's do this together. So first of all, this is not a perfect square trinomial. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna subtract four from both sides and you're gonna write X squared minus six X equals negative four. So now you're going to take half of negative six, which is negative three, and square it. 
So what you're going to do is you're going to add nine to both sides and you did create a perfect square trinomial. And what you created was X minus three quantity squared. So this multiplies out X minus three times X minus three. It multiplies to give the trinomial and this equals five. So now we use square root method. Don't forget plus or minus. X minus three quantity squared, one comes out. And this is just plus or minus radical five. So when you add three to both sides, you get X equals three plus or minus radical five. So in your solution set, you're writing three minus radical five and three plus radical five. Okay, now I'm gonna time you again on this problem and you're gonna try to do the problem quickly together because I'm still trying to prove to you that you can work this more quickly together. Here's the problem. Okay, this is not a perfect square trinomial. And I'm gonna give you seven minutes. So you have to report back at 1135. So write it down. You're reporting back to this meeting WebEx at 11.35. All right, I'll see you in your Teams. All right, hopefully you made it back. All right, you guys, good job. Things went a lot smoother that time, so congratulations. I'm just gonna write it over here because I like this board. So hopefully you're understanding um, how to collaborate effectively and um, you're believing it in it, so that's good. So in this problem, you wanna add one. So you get X squared plus four X and leave yourself some space. So you're gonna take half of four, which is two. And when you square it, you get four. So the perfect square trinomial it's going to be add four, but you have to balance, so add four. So your binomial square is going to be x plus two. And now you're ready to do square root method. So take the square root of both sides. Don't forget plus or minus. So you get x plus two is equal to plus or minus radical five. So when you subtract two to negative two plus or minus radical five. So your two answers are negative two minus radical five and negative two plus radical five. Okay, we're gonna do one more just to prove to you that you can do it and build your confidence. All right, x squared minus 6x minus 11 equals zero. That is not a perfect trinomial. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna solve this by completing the square. All right, so let's see. Back at 1145, so 1145. All right, you guys. Hey, good job.
I notice as you guys are finishing the problems quicker when you're working together. So hopefully you're noticing that too. Um, so solving by completing the square. This guy is useless. Let's get rid of him. And you're going to leave yourself a little bit of space to create the perfect square trinomial. So you're going to take half of negative six, which is what? Negative three. And when you square it, you get a nine. So when you add nine, you add nine to that side. So you get your binomial square is X minus three quantity squared equals 20. Now you're going to take the square root of both sides. Don't forget plus or minus. So you have X minus three is equal to plus or minus. Now, don't you have to simplify that radical? So isn't the prime factorization for 20, two times 10, two times five, doesn't a two come out? So now when you add three, wouldn't your answer be three plus or minus two radical five? And don't try to add that three and two, you can't add unlike radicals. All right, so how many of you got it right? Good. Good, good, good. All right, so all of that was solving by completing the square. Okay, anybody want to ask any questions before I erase it? Okay, now the last solving method <clears throat> is the most used method, but sometimes it can be long and tedious. So I personally don't use it all the time because I don't wanna do nine steps every time. This method works for everything. It works for integers, it works for radicals, it works for imaginaries. And it's called the quadratic formula, which you've probably seen before in Algebra 1. So you see how that radical goes all the way out and this big old long bar goes all the way out. Sometimes students cut off the radical or cut off the bar, don't do that. It has to look exactly like this. All right, now there's only once or twice that I make a fool out of myself um, during the year. This is one of them. Uh, Cause I'm gonna sing the quadratic formula song to you. You're gonna sing it too, um, but there's also a way to memorize this about this guy that goes to this party. And I, I, don't, I, I don't know how that goes, but if you memorized it that way, fine. I'm gonna teach you the song right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a fool out of myself. You guys ready? All right. It's X is equal to negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus four AC all over two A. All right, now what you're going to do is you're going to unmute yourself. Everybody's going to unmute yourself and everybody's going to sing. Ready? All right, everybody unmute yourself. All right, on the count of three, ready? <coughs> One, two, three. X is equal to negative. Negative B 
plus or Give yourself a hand. All right, we're going to sing it again. Unmute yourself. Esteban. Everybody. Fernando. Ready? On the count of three. Yes, ma'am. One, two, three. I see it. X, uh, Z, Z, B plus or minus square root. B square minus C. All over to, to a. a. Yes, sir. Give yourself a hand. <coughs> now, when we do that in the classroom, if you don't sing, you have to sing a solo. So you get a lucky break with distance learning because I can't tell who's singing and who's not. So, all right, let's do a problem. Let's do... Um, 76. I'm still on page 106. Okay, with the quadratic formula, you have to set it equal to zero and make sure it's in standard form, descending powers of x. So what you need to find is A, which is 1, B, which is 8, C, which is 12. So we're going to solve for X. It's X is to B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC. All over to a so x is equal to negative eight plus or minus the square root of 64 minus four times one times 12 is 48 all divided by two X is equal to negative eight plus or minus 64 minus 18 is I think 16 divided by two. So this would be negative eight plus or minus four divided by two. So your two solutions would be negative eight minus four over two, and x is equal to negative eight plus four over two. So x would equal negative 12 over two, which is negative six. And x is equal to negative four over two, which is negative two. So your two solutions are negative six and negative. Ms. Bridge, we can't see all of the whiteboard. So this is long, right? And so we don't want to use the quadratic formula if we don't have to. We could rather solve by factoring your square roots. This is too long. But like I said, sometimes we need this because everything doesn't, quadratics don't all work for factoring. Quadratics don't work for square root method. So you realize that the more steps you have to make, the more chance you have of making errors. So let me do another one. Anybody want to ask me about this?
Let's do another one. Solving using the quadratic formula. Let's do number 78. Well, set up, it's set equal to zero and it's in standard form. So we know that A is one, B is five, C is two. So X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of five squared minus four times A times C all divided by two times one. So X is equal to negative five plus or minus the square root of 25 minus four times one times two is eight divided by two. So X is equal to negative five plus or minus the square root of 25 minus eight is 17, which there are no perfect squares. And guess what? That's the answer. So there's nothing else to do. It's negative five minus square root of 17 over two, and it's negative five plus square root of 17 over two. And this problem could not have been factored and you can't use square root method because of that X. So you'd have to use complete, completing the square or the quadratic formula. All right, so let's try your own problem. So I'm going to give you a problem and you're going to have to come back to me. So this time you're going to go to your math wizard teams. You're going to solve the quadratic using the quadratic formula. So here's your problem. It's 5x squared plus x plus 2 equals 0. Sorry about the board's wet. All right. So you're going to be back. I'm going to, I'm going to give you five minutes. So you have to be back at 11. Oh, I'm sorry. 1205. So 1205, you have to come back. All right, so I'll see you back at 1205. All right, guys, welcome. All right, so in this case, it is set equal to zero. It is in standard form. So our A is equal to five, our B is equal to one, and our C is equal to two. So using the quadratic formula to solve, we get negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus times C rebel out all divided by two times five. So X is one plus or minus the square root of one minus, isn't this four times five times two, which is 40? Oh. So is that, Five X plus, okay, check this out. I wrote down the problem wrong. So this negative two. 
So guess what? Tomorrow, next time we meet, I'm going to tell you, you can't have a negative under the radical. So a negative under the radical means no solutions. So this is a nine. So no solutions. You cannot have a negative for a square root. No real solutions. There's a map solutions, but there's no real solutions. Now, I didn't mean to do that. This was supposed to be a minus two and it would have worked out perfectly, but I miswrote it because square root, no solutions. All right, so. Not gonna do any of this tonight. So just study for the exam by working problems for exam P6 in your e-text. So make sure you work those globe problems um, online to study for the exam. All right, I hope you guys have a beautiful and good luck on your exam tomorrow morning. Okay, do good. Okay, now remember that I cut You have to take your time, make sure you can do this correctly. Okay? Have a good rest. You're with me if you want. I'm going to turn off the, off the recorder.